6.36 p.m., the Canton Township Board of Trustees regular board meeting, uh, November 9th. Can we please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. When she gets here. Okay, the first item on the agenda, can I have a motion to move? Oh, can I have a call to order, please, Clerk Segrist? Trustee Borninski. Here. Graham Hudak. Good evening. The record reflect that Clerk Segrist is in attendance. Trustee Foster and Ganguly are absent. Treasurer Slavens. Good evening. And Trustee Snyderman. I am here. Thank you. Can I please have a motion to go to closed session? Madam Supervisor, I move that the board go into closed session to, to discuss um, pending litigation for FP development versus Canton. Support. Moved by Clerk Segrist, supported by Treasurer Slavens. Clerk Segrist, can you please call roll? Borninski. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Segrist, aye. Slavens. Aye. Schneiderman. Aye. Thank you. We will be back in when closed session is over. Thank you. Can I please have a motion to um, move out of closed session? Madam Supervisor, I move to return into open session at Support. 739. Moved by Clerk Segris, supported by Trustee Borninski. Uh, can I please, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, the next item on our agenda is the adoption of the agenda. So I'd like to hear a motion to adopt the agenda with the addition of item C4 onto the consent calendar. Consider approval to add to the previously awarded contract for the demolition of 880 and 890 Lots Road North by adding the last property, 870 Lots Road North, and including a $5,000 cost increase for the entire project due to time delays and an increase in costs. And also add onto the general calendar G6, which is consider amendment to operations policy seven, procedure for conduct of township board meetings. So moved. Support. Moved by Clerk Segris, supported by Treasurer Slavens. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Great, motion passes. Next on the agenda is, okay, public comment. I'm sorry. Okay, approval of the minutes from October 26, 2021. Can so I... moved. Support. Motion moved by Clerk Segris, supported by Trustee Borninski. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Now public comment is next on the agenda. And so we are now at the portion of our meeting designed for public comment. Anyone who wishes to address the board is invited to at this time. We appreciate that individuals please identify themselves by name and community of residence while limiting their comments to three minutes. This is an opportunity for members of the public to inform the board about their views and provide input for us to take into the decision-making process. It's not a time for question and answers. If you seek information about the administration of the township government or are looking for a response, please follow up with township staff on particular issues. So anyone, um, please raise your hand if you want public comment. Okay, I'll start in the back. Go ahead, up to the podium, please. State your name and place of residence, please. Yes, my name is Michelle Thomas, and I didn't hear the last part you said. Name and? Place of residence. Oh, um, Hawkesbury Court in Canton, 4138, Hawkesbury Court, Kent, Michigan. Mm -hmm. sure, go ahead. Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to voice my concerns regarding the removal and replacement of trees in the proposed Anand development. As I had mentioned in my email to the board today, I'm concerned about the complete removal of all of the trees in the project. I do not see why the line of 40 to 50 foot mature native trees on the south side of the proposed development cannot stay. Supervisor Graham Hudak, I do appreciate your response and information regarding Canton's loss of control over the tree ordinance. This news is extremely disheartening. 
In respect to community building, it's unfortunate that the Anand development has not considered the effects that their extreme tree removal plan will have on our community, their neighbors, <clears throat> excuse me. Also mentioned in my email, a non-site plan regarding replacement trees and the lack of replacement trees around the total perimeter of their development, specifically the area where previously there was an er emergency access point at Hawkesbury Court. The original site plan showed an access point between a non-village and Hawkesbury Court, which was to have been deleted, but is still showing on the updated site plan. We were assured by the planning commissioners that this would be remedied before the final approval. We would like the Board of Trustees assurance that before the project's final approval, that the planting of trees is contiguous around the entire development and includes the area where the previous access point between Anand Village and Hawkesbury Court intersect. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Anyone else in the back row for public comment? Sure, go ahead, sir. Please state your name and your place of residence. My name is Rick Thiexton. I reside at 4229 Merriweather Circle in Canton Township, uh, Crystal Village. I also have con some concerns about the project that Anand is proposing uh, to the north of us. The site plans themselves do not address specifically the issues with flooding that we're experiencing in our community. Um, I understand that Wayne County is responsible for the county drains, but Canton is responsible for serving its members and making sure that we don't have flooding issues due to poor drain planning. Uh, this past summer, we had uh, experienced at least three times where water was shooting out of manhole covers in the street because the retention ponds would not drain because the overflow into the township drains, which supposedly are under Wayne County's provision, um, those are full. There's trees in them, there's debris in them, and there's no way for those ponds to empty out. Now our concern is we're putting a new development to the north of us. There are currently farmer's ditches in there, and we need to make sure um, that Canton is behind us and making the developer grade it properly, because if he doesn't, all that water is going to be coming into the backyards of our existing houses. And I discussed it with Patrick Sloan. We've discussed it with Charles LaRock. We've also submitted uh, um, a ticket to Wade County to come out and clear out those open drains so that the, town, the, the uh, retention ponds in our development will drain properly and cannot get a hold of anybody to find out what the status is. And I don't want us to become East Dearborn where every time it rains, our streets are flooding, our ponds are flooding, our houses are flooding. Crystal Village is a senior community, and our residents cannot handle continuous problems with the drainage and flooding. So my ask today is that somebody follows up with the Anand Village developer and make sure that it's graded properly, because if it's not, we're going to have more water and more flooding problems. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you. Anyone else in the room for public comment, sir? Please state your name and place of residence. Yeah, good evening, my name is Don Carney. I reside at 4022 Rinwood Lane, 42 year resident of Canton. I also live in Crystal Village. The approvals of Ann Am Village in 2017 and 2019 were approved with single story ranch style homes. They were stated to being complementary to the 55 and older community of Crystal Village that surrounds their property. Annan Village was to be marketed to seniors and was stated to be an empty nester type project. Today's request for your approval does not state ranch style homes and will not be age restricted. In the presentation by Mr. Vora, who has represented Annan Village and is a part owner at the September 23rd, 2021 letter to the Planning Commission indicates that they plan to sell the property upon your approval. 
he stated that the new developer may have multiple elevations and a few different home plans. I would like to see the word ranch style written into the approval plans and hope that the homes built complement Crystal Village subdivision. I also have concerns on the stormwater drainage on how both the north, south, and east and west farmer ditches are removed and graded, especially how the drainage handled exiting the property going into Fowler Creek. Mr. Thurkston stated his concerns, and I thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Next, please. Sir, go ahead. Please state your name and residence, please. Good evening. My name is Daryl Schwant, and I'm at 2007 Rector Court. Uh, the Canton Dog Park is a wonderful facility for our pets' enjoyment and a place where residents create friendships and a sense of community. All of us, large and small dog owners alike, share the common goal of ensuring a safe, healthy, and fun environment for our dogs and for ourselves. Over time, continuing usage and park conditions have shown that the current design is no longer fully benefiting all who visit. Based on the needs of the dogs who use it daily, we ask that the park be reproportioned into safer, more equitable sections. Since its opening, dogs under 20 pounds have used the western half of the park. Those over 20 pounds have used the eastern side closest to Denton Road. The large dog park gets much greater daily usage than the small dog side. We've done some surveying over time. And as such, endures more ground wear and tear. Compounding this is the fact that since the western half has had a higher elevation, any drainage naturally flows down into the large dog park. The greater daily usage and drainage issues create large mud fields in the park and near the entrances. After heavy rains, the large dog park becomes either unusable or results in very muddy dogs. A secondary fence down the middle of the large dog park divides this area into two smaller halves. On occasion, the middle gate is locked for maintenance reasons, and after periods of heavy rainfall, this has resulted in too many large dogs confined in a much smaller area. There have been instances when, for example, up to 40 people and up to 50 dogs were confined in the restricted half of the large park, while there were only four dogs in the full-sized small dog side. This confined situation has created conflicts between highly active large dogs and their passionate owners. To make the park safer and more equitable, we are proposing that the park be redesigned in the following way. Designate one quarter of the park in the area closest to Denton Road as the, places for owner, as the place for owners with dogs under 20 pounds. Then opening the remaining three quarters of the park to all dogs. This will create the following benefits. The separate Denton end will benefit those who don't want their small dogs interacting with larger ones. Once reconditioned by the Canton Park Services plan, the Denton end may require less maintenance due to less intensive small dog traffic. All small dogs will have access to the entire park and may continue using the higher ground area at the west end based on individual owner preference and comfort level. A larger area for all dogs may minimize the dog and human conflicts that have occurred on those occasions when large dogs are confined to half their currently allotted space. Giving large dogs access to the higher ground will help avoid mud created by weather and drainage patterns. A larger area for all dogs may lessen overall ground wear and tear, especially in the lower areas, and reduce the maintenance needed by Canton Leisure Services and park volunteers. Small dogs have always been welcomed into the large dog side. Thank you, sir. Sorry, we're at three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Next, back row. Advisor, good evening trustees. My name is Brad Holf. I live in Canton and I also would like to speak to trees. So we go from trees to dogs to trees. I think that's a natural connection. Uh, I too am concerned about the removal of trees on the Anand property development. My concern is in reading the tree regulations of Canton, it seems to me that there really are no tree regulations in Canton because all trees can be removed at any point. The only distinction is if a tree is non-registered, it doesn't have to be replaced. If a tree is registered, it's replaced by two small trees. If a tree is a landmark tree, and they are very few and far between, we don't have any. 
then it's replaced by four trees. The taking of mature trees that have demonstrated their ability to grow in what is probably substandard soil, because the property in question at one end is wet and supports cotton woods only, or clay, <laughs> which only supports hickories. Replacing those with deciduous trees of three inches or evergreen trees means that they will slowly die and be replaced over time. I see that the DDA is spending our tax money to build habitat along Ford Road. That's a wonderful initiative. I suspect of limited value to most wildlife, given the conditions on Ford Road. We currently have a stand of trees that provides habitat for wildlife. To cut that down and replace it with tiny trees is a reduction of wildlife. The deer, the great horned owls, the red-bellied woodpeckers that currently live on the production of the elm trees and hickory trees along the south line of this property are not going to go to Ford Road and look for food, no matter how much habitat we provide there. So the idea of replacing habitat with marginal trees of marginal value while building habitat in a marginal area seems illogical to me. So I am arguing for preservation of some of the trees on this property. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Anyone else in the room for public comment? Do we have anyone online? Anyone for public comment online? I don't see any hands. Anyone public comment? Public comment. OK, so public comment is ended. We will go on to the next item. Can I have a motion to pay the bills? Madam Supervisor, I motion that we pay the bills. Support. Moved by Treasurer Slavin, supported by Clerk Snyderman. Not a clerk. <laughs> sorry. You want to be a clerk? My job. <laughs> <laughs> by Trustee Snyderman, I'm sorry. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Payment of bills. Oh, okay, the next item we have is a presentation swearing in of the new Youth Advisory Council members. So can we have the Youth Advisory Council members up here at the front for your swearing in? You can stand here along the line and come on up and face the audience. <laughs> stand up. And repeat after me. When I say state your name, that's where you're going to state your name. <laughs> Please don't say the words state your name. Okay? Good. I state your name. I solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Michigan. Faithfully discharge the duties of youth advisory council member, the charter council of Kansas. Congratulations. Um, Laura, did you get some pictures? I did, yes. Okay. Yeah, appreciate it. Do you want to um, give a little summary of what the Youth Advisory Council does? <laughs> <laughs> So the Youth Advisory Council is out of our Black Youth and Teen Center, which stands for Building Leaders out of Canton's Kids. Um, we are a youth and teen center that provide after school programming, um, youth development and leadership programs for teens ages 11 to 17. 
So this council is comprised of high school students who promote youth and serve the community. Um, they volunteer within the community. They are a youth voice on several adult boards. They have their own endowment fund through the Canton Community Foundation where they grant money to other um, youth organizations. Um, it's a competitive group to be a part of. It's part of an application process. Um, so you're really looking at some of the best of the best um, here in the Canton community as far as youth are concerned. So. Congratulations. Great job. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good job. Our next item is a public hearing. Um, public hearing and consider approval of Canton Leisure Services five-year recreation master plan 2022 through 2026. Can I have a motion to move into public hearing? So moved. Nope. Please don't. Oh, okay. Madam yeah, Supervisor, I move to open the public hearing for comment on the Canton Leisure Services five year reconstruction master plan for the 2022 2026 years at 7 59 p.m. I'll support it then. Moved by Clerk Seeger, supported by Trustee Snyderman. Do we have anyone? And um, do you want to give a uh, beginning? Thank you, thank you. Is there anyone out there who would like to comment on the master plan for leisure services? Anyone in the audience? No? Do we have anyone online that would like to comment on the leisure services plan? I don't see any hands online for the leisure services plan. Okay, can I have a motion to close the public hearing? Can you just state three times if there's oh. any public comment? Any public comment? No public comment, public comment, public comment, not before, online. Um, before we close it, will we get just a comment from the director on the process or will that be afterwards? That will or? be after we close it. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Can I have a motion to close the public hearing? Madam Supervisor, I move to close the public hearing at eight o'clock. Support. Okay, motion made by Clerk Seeger, supported by Treasurer Slavens. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, is there any board discussion? Uh, Greg, do you wanna describe the process of what we're doing? The, the, wanna talk about the master plan? Yeah, so tonight uh, is kind of the, the final piece of the puzzle prior to us sending this plan off to SEMCOG, Wayne County, and the DNR. Uh, this plan has been going on throughout the year. We've been working with uh, Laura Haw from McKenna Consultants. She's with us this evening. If we have any specific questions for her, um, her and her team have put a lot of work as well as the leisure services team into gathering a, a, a fair, fa uh, pardon me, fairly substantial amount of public comment uh, throughout this process, which is ideally why we wouldn't be getting much tonight because everyone's had their opportunity. Um, to provide input on the master plan for the future direction of uh, the parks and facilities throughout the township. Um, and some specifics um, included in this plan are um, a 10 minute walk analysis, as well as a specific park plan for um, the park on Ridge Road, as well as updates to Heritage Park. Um, received a lot of positive feedback uh, throughout the process and we're very excited about the future direction of the plan. All right, thank you. Any questions from the board or discussion? Steven? Um, only thing I would like is Ms. Ha, if she could come and tell us how, from the perspective of the consultant, the process went and um, if she feels the community supports the plan we're moving forward with. Good evening, trustees. Um, yes, this um, planning process involved uh, multiple opportunities for public engagement throughout um, really early, um, early summer into the fall. Um, at those events, um, we estimated that um, over 850 individuals were directly spoken to um, and input received. The plan was also available to the public for the whole month of October. Um, it was promoted online. It was at several different locations throughout the township, and it was included in the newsletter. And there were a couple comments that were received, um, generally supportive and in line of 
um, what is already in the plan today. Thank you. Anything else? Go ahead, Kate. Um, I'd just like to say thank you to Laura and, and McKenna for all the work you did on this. Um, I think we had a very good process and um, do wish that we'd maybe received a little more public comment during the month of October when we had the public comment period, but um, I guess you know, no news is good news. Maybe people liked it. Um, I am very excited about the, the plan, so um, just appreciate all the work that was done. Um, also, all the work done by Leisure Services Department because um, this was a long process, but um, very much appreciated, and I think this is a good plan that will um, take Canton into the future. So. Anyone else? Okay, great. Can I have a motion on the adoption of the plan? Madam Supervisor, I move to adopt the Canton Leisure Services Five Year Recreation Master Plan 2022 through 2026 as presented. Support. And by Clerk Segrist, support by Trustee Snyderman. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Great job. We have a master plan. Next item on the agenda is a consent calendar. Can I have a motion to approve the consent calendar? Madam Supervisor, I move that the board approve the consent calendar as presented. Item C1, consider second reading of an amendment to Appendix A, zoning of the Code of Ordinances regarding Alexandria and, and Ariana, LLC rezoning. Consider authorization of a purchase order to the Manic and Smith Group Incorporated for professional engineering services for the 2021 Road Improvement Program Intersection Design and con item, uh, item C3, consider approval of settlement in the matter of Spencer v. Canton. And finally, item C4, consider approval to add to the pre previously awarded contract for the de demolition of 880 and 890 Lots Road North by adding the last property, 870. Lots Road North and including a $5,000 cost increase for the entire project due to time delays and an increase in costs. Support. It should be by Clerk Seeger's support by Trustee Berninski. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, consent calendar passes. Next item is the general calendar, item G1. Madam Supervisor, I move that the board let me get there. Approve the following resolution. Approval of the preliminary site plan for Anand Village detached condominiums. Whereas project sponsor has requested approval of the preliminary site plan for Anand Village, which is a detached condominium project located at the southeast corner of Geddes Road and Denton Road. And whereas the Planning Commission reviewed the preliminary site plan for a non village and voted 6 0 to recommend approval of the request, which can with conditions as it meets the design requirements of the zoning ordinance and condominium ordinance. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Canton, Michigan, is hereby approve the preliminary site plan for a non village detached condominiums on the tax parcel subject tax parcel, subject to all applicable state and local development regulations. Support. Thank you. A motion made by Clerk Seeger, supported by Trustee Snyderman. The project sponsor is proposing a 43-unit single-family detached condominium development on 11.51 acres at the southeast corner of Gettys and Denton Roads. As a detached condominium, the units are not individual lots. The building pads have a 10-foot separation, 25-foot setback from the edge of the private road, 20-foot setback from the edge of the sidewalk, and a 35-foot rear setback. The preliminary site plan was previously approved on August 27, 2019, but expired on August 27, 2020. Director Smith, do you have anything to add? I believe he's on remotely, correct? Yes, okay. I am remote. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't really have anything else to add. I know Patrick is on the call as well. Um, I did, I know there were some questions and some concerns, um, but if you can see in your packet, although it's not required, they are showing ranch style homes um, as the proposed style of home. I know that was a concern. 
And uh, we cannot restrict on the age of an occupant or a resident that would be in this, um, in this development, unless it was actually voluntarily uh, deeded that way. Um, but that is not the case uh, in this situation. And then I just wanna remind the board too that we do have a landscape architect under contract that does review all of our site plans. So they will be reviewing this um, in regards to the concerns that we had with the trees. So I know those were some of the concerns that were out there. I just wanted to address those. And if Patrick had anything more, he's on the call as well. All right, any board discussion or questions, comments? Um, thank you, um, Director Smith, for that background. Um, some of the comments that I noticed in the Planning Commission minutes talked about new elevations. I can't remember if we've seen this one before because there was another sub, I think, unless it was this one where we also showed concerns about the elevations. And it seems like the Planning Commission was satisfied by these new elevations on, on these uh, homes, these ranch style homes. Yeah, you, this, you have not seen these elevations yet. This okay, the so that must have been another sub where the, a similar concern had come to us. Is Michael, right. is Patrick on or is he not on the, or? He should be I under a CAN MSD. Uh, well, um, no, CAN MSD is his. Unfortunately, it's the system's not allowing me. When I pull up participants, it is it's showing blank. just a blank <laughs> screen here. I don't. Know uh, what no is problem. It. I don't really have a specific question for Patrick. So, um, the only other thing I was going to say is that the concerns that we heard tonight from the residents are concerns that I think every member of this board. I know I do, um, and I've heard words, similar words from my um, co-board members up here and even the ones that aren't here tonight about development in our community. And having served here for nine years so far, um, I also know that time and time again, the courts have struck down at many things that we've tried to do as a board. Um, in fact, we're, there's ongoing attempts to do uh, derail the ability of this board and the community to preserve trees, preserve nature in our community, and it's very frustrating. Um, it's frustrating for us as well. Um, we try to work with the developers as best we can to um, push the limits of what we can require them to do. But in the end, um, the fights that even preceding me on this board the fights that we've attempted have been struck down many times in, in over the years in terms of uh, things that developers want to do. So, um, yeah, I'm frustrated as well. Um, I think we will, as Director Smith said, attempt to do the po best possible we can to recreate the environment for animals and for also humans to enjoy in the community. Um, I do notice what looks to be a robust plan to put trees all around the development. Um, it's a, it seems to be a pretty small development, so um, there's not a lot of open space. I guess the last question I would have for you, Director Smith, if you know this, if usually Patrick says that this um, development met the requirements for open space. And I'm assuming it does as well. Otherwise, the, uh, the planning commission would not have let it go through. Correct. That would, that would be a fair statement. Okay. And um, with this type of uh, development, though, there is no required open space. Um, OK. It's still a robust landscaping plan that was submitted. And um, he, although we can't get him up here, he did just text me and say that Planning Commission really did like the elevations and that you will see this again, um, as this is the preliminary site plan, right. so you will see the final come back before you. And at that point, we'll have gone through the full engineering um, review and as well working with Wayne County and stormwater uh, matter. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So Greg, are you able to, I think your host, are you able to, you can't pull him up? Okay. 
Now, unfortunately, as you can see, when I pull up participants, this is all I'm getting is a blank box here. So I don't know what the story is there. All right, thank you. Any other board members' comments? Kate? Um, I just want to echo what Stephen just said. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's very frustrating. Um, and I also wanted to thank Jade for mentioning the stormwater management because um, I am very concerned about that. Um, and hoping that we can keep an eye on the situation um, here and throughout the township. Anyone else? Michael? Yeah, I'll speak. Um, I agree with a number of the individuals who spoke tonight about the importance of the tree replacement ordinance, the importance of protecting green space inside the community. Um, Michigan is an interesting law uh, state with a lot of interesting development laws. And those laws give us a few useful tools to regulate development legally. And the communities that regulate businesses illegally tend to pay millions of dollars in settlements to developers. So I'm not interested in breaking the law. One of my largest concerns is the fact that um, our current tree replacement ordinance is basically holding on by a thin, a very thin thread right now. Um, it is under attack. And, you know, I share that sentiment, right? It is not unreasonable for individuals in a community to want to have a say in how that community develops, in what their neighborhood looks like. And it's bizarre to me that the political philosophy of some people um, is the case that, um, that that shouldn't factor in at all, that that shouldn't be allowed at all. That's a frustration for me. Um, that said, I am a rule follower. Um, I know this is a general condominium um, plan that does not require a public benefit, does not require the open space requirements of our uh, planned development districts or planned development agreements, uh, doesn't need to apply, doesn't need to comply with our tree replacement ordinance in that regard, um, but that they are going to be complying with our tree replacement ordinance. Um, I also noticed there will be a number of catch basins uh, towards the back of the property, which is a good thing that that will feed the water towards the detention ponds. Um, Additionally, the township has a nuisance ordinance. It is, um, you can't develop your land in a way that you would discharge water onto another person's property. You could be subject to substantial financial penalties if that were the case. So I'm glad we've got the nuisance ordinance in place to protect any residents whose property abuts this property. I'm glad that in the site plan, they're gonna be putting in a number of detention or catch basins that will pull, pull the water towards the detention pond. Um, and then I am also happy that they will be complying with the tree replacement ordinance, even though there is no legal requirement for them to do so. That said, all of the concerns of the residents, I also hold them as well. Again, I'm just very careful about exercising the authority I don't have, which is I don't, you know, they elected me clerk, they didn't elect me God. I can't um, just wave a magic wand, unfortunately. Thank you. Anyone else? I know this is a we can at the end for public comment. Okay. Thank you. I do want to read what um, Patrick did say. Since Patrick can't come on, he did send me an email so I can read what he wrote. And I had also emailed it to some of the residents. So a non-village is proposed as a generic condo development that is not a planned development as described by zoning laws. So there's no definite benefit or minimum PD open space required. Therefore, if the site plan complies with the standards of the zoning ordinance and condominium ordinance, there's little discretion that we have to change the layout. The purpose of tagging the existing trees is to inventory them by size, species, and condition in preparation of the tree removal calculations. The applicant proposes to comply with the tree preservation standard of the zoning ordinance. There were no landmark trees inventoried on the site. The proposed replacement trees are a mix of nine foot tall evergreens and three inch caliper deciduous trees, which exceed the sizing requirements of the ordinance. Additionally, these proposed trees would become part of an approved site plan, so any trees on the approved plan that die must be replaced. The final tree removal plan won't be known until the final site plan review when the site engineering will be complete. So there may be opportunities to preserve some of the trees once they have completed their final engineering designs. We will continually work with the applicant on this prior to final site plan review. 
but we are now at the preliminary site plan phase at this time. So basically he's saying kind of what Jade said, and that's, I believe, what he was trying to link in to say to us. So I just wanted to repeat what he said, because I know that's what he wanted. And as, as everybody said here, we're very frustrated by what's happening with the tree ordinance. Um, you know, outside groups are coming in to take away our community's control. And we will continue to make sure we do the best that we can and work with the developers to maintain as many trees as possible. Let me see. Any other comments or questions? Oh, okay, great. All those in favor of the preliminary site plan say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Okay, motion passes. Thank you. The next item is uh, item G2. Consider approval to schedule show cause hearings for one property subject to dangerous building hearing orders. I am supervisor, I move to approve the date of December 14, 2021 at 6 15 p.m. for the purpose of conducting show cause hearings for the properties that failed to comply with the deadlines imposed by the dangerous buildings hearing officer for those properties. Support. Motion made by Clerk Seeger, supported by Treasurer Slavens. Thank you. There is a property that has failed to meet the requirements and deadlines established by the hearing officer following dangerous building hearings as prescribed by the township ordinance and state law. In light of the failures to comply, the board must take action to set a public hearing at which property owners must be given an opportunity to show cause why the hearing officer's order should not be enforced. The hearings must occur at least 30 days after the meeting at which the board sets the hearing and notice of the date and time chosen shall be sent to the property owner. Following the hearings at which both the property owners and the township staff shall be given the opportunity to speak, the board must decide if the determination of the hearing officer should be carried out as ordered, whether the order need not be followed or whether there is some other appropriate resolutions to the matters. Director Smith, do you have anything to add? Um, no, this is really just to set the, 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 uh, the hearing date of the 14th of December. Um, we will be supplying um, the board of trustees with a everything from the township's packet um, prior to that for your review. Thank you. Any board discussion? Nope. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item G3. Approved purchase of four digital editing computers for the cable studio. Madam Supervisor, I move. I move to authorize the purchase of four digital editing computers from Origin PC 12-12-12400 Southwest 134th Court, unit number eight, Miami, Florida, in the amount of $25,436 to be taken from the account number listed for capital outlay computers and equipment. Support. Motion made by Clerk Segris, supported by Trustee Berninski. An invitation to bid was solicited in October 2021 for new editing computers for the cable staff. From this solicitation, two bids were received for the specific equipment requested with Origin High Performance PC, submitting the low bid in the amount of $25,436. Canton Leisure Services is recommending the approval to purchase four editing computers from Origin High Performance PCs in the total amount of $25,436. Any board questions or discussions? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item G4, consider approval of contract with audience view ticketing system. Madam Supervisor. I move to approve a five-year contract agreement with audience view pro 1500 Broadway, seventh floor, New York, New York, 10036 and to approve the attached budget amendment and, and for the purchase of additional computer hardware equipment not to exceed $1,500 which is necessary in conjunction with the new ticketing system. Support. Motion made by Clerk Segrist, supported by Treasurer Slavens. The Village Theater's original ticket system, seat advisor box office. Yep. Pending approval of the final contractual language by the township attorney. I wasn't done with the motion. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Are you still in support? I'm still in support. 
All right. Motion made by Clark Seeger, still in support by Treasurer Slavens. The Village Theater's original ticket system, Seat Advisor Box Office, went out of business in 2020. Since then, the theater has been using a temporary system called On the Stage. This system was a good step to fill the interim, but does not meet the full needs of the Village Theater. After extensive research of multiple box office solutions, Leisure Services is recommending to enter a five-year contract with Audience View Pro to supply the new ticketing software for the Cherry Hill Village Theater. In addition, several hardware items are required to help support this transition, such as ticket scanners and printers. These items would be purchased separate of the agreement and with currently budgeted funds not to exceed $15,000. This new system provides the following upgrades, both box office and online sales, robust marketing capabilities, including seamless integration with our current e-marketing system, advanced reporting, real-time processing and deposits, concession sales, house staff and volunteer schedule management, live stream shows. The cost of the system is $1.50 per ticket sold, which the Village Theater offsets with a ticket processing fee passed on to the consumer. There is no cost for printing complimentary tickets or concession items, and there is no annual minimum. Director Honberger, do you have anything to add? No, no but just that this will uh, certainly provide much greater service to our, um, our users and customers out at the Village Theater. Um, you'll be able to purchase concessions and bar items with a credit card in the future, which is currently cash only because of our, the limitations on our previous system that we had is, uh, and we started with COVID to do um, virtual shows as well. So if you have out of town family um, that has a child or grandchild in a show, you'll be able to uh, purchase a, a virtual ticket to that show. Those are unlimited number of seats in addition to the in-house seats as well. Um, so happy to answer. We did analyze several other um, ticketing software solutions as well. And coming to this recommendation, our top three, um, actually the, the other two in our top three were purchased by this company during our evaluation process. <laughs> so that kind of made our decision a little bit easier. Great, thank you. Steven? Um, sounds cool. The virtual stuff is, is neat and paying for concessions. Um, the one question I had was, um, I haven't, obviously we're just ramping back up with shows at the theater and um, I can't remember if the old system, I doubt it did this, but is there on an app or anything with showing like a QR code for your ticket or is that not possible with this? So this will have a, I don't know if it'll be through an app or not, um, but you will be able to print off a, a barcode that you'll come in and then we'll scan to or potentially just ticket. scan off your correct. phone. Correct. Okay. Cool. That's great. Diane? I just want to make a, <clears throat> excuse me, quick comment. You know, I think this is a great, it's going to be a safe and secure way to process um, the tickets. And then also, uh, Leisure Service met with Treasury and Finance to make sure that we get daily reporting. And so we will be looking forward to daily reports. Thank you. Hey. Yeah, just wondering about the um, the length of the contract, which I think you said was five years. Um, Correct. Is, is there any kind of a discount for getting such a long contract? Or? Uh, well, that's their minimum contract for this price. There was another option where we would have a, um, a, a monthly fee, but then um, by taking advantage of this option, um, for months where there, if there are very few or no shows or anything like that, there is no minimum fee or minimum guarantee for us to, to have revenue for them. Okay, I see. The alternative option for a shorter contract had um, guaranteed minimums for them. Okay, understood. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? I know this is a great program. I know that, um, especially during virtual with my kids in sports, you know, I could have family members watch hockey three states over or volleyball, and now this, this is great, because I know a lot of those shows will sell out, and to be able to have grandparents sit in their own living room and watch, that's great. And also, you had explained to me earlier that it's not just going to be a remote camera at the back of the theater, and all you see is a little stage. They'll be able to zoom in and see the performers. Correct. Yep, that's true. 
depending on it'll be uh, that'll be dependent on the service if it's if it's a Canton produce show absolutely um, if it is a renter taking advantage of that that'll be um, kind of incumbent on them to select that option because we'll provide them with just the one camera in the back that would provide show the entire stage um, for their base cost and if they want the additional um, staff person to be there from our cable department switching the cameras and zooming in providing a better experience they would have to pay for that upgrade um, to cover Canton Township's cost. Great more great technology. Okay all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Great motion passes. Speaking of great technology, it looks like Jade might be frozen there on the uh, screen. <laughs> he's either frozen or he's, he's in deep, deep thought. <laughs> did, did your Zoom crash over there, Greg? I have the camera off. <laughs> oh, oh, the camera's off? Hear. He said his yes. camera's off. Uh, do you, Jade, at home, do you, do you see us or do you see your, a still image of yourself? I see you. You guys, all okay. of you up there. Perfect. That's that was my only concern. Yeah, it does appear to be a, an issue with my computer because I cannot click on very much at all. So I apologize for that. I don't want to click on too much because and affect the uh, cable broadcast. All right. Thank you. Item G5, consider waiving the bidding process for the purchase of the Apex Officer Training Simulator and an associated 2021 police budget amendment. And Supervisor, I move to approve waiving the bidding process due to sole source provider and approve the purchase of the Apex Officer Training Simulator from GovRed Technology Incorporated in the amount of $62,500 and to approve the attached budget amendment to the 2021 police budget increasing the fund balance appropriation and capital machinery and equipment accounts. Support. Sorry, Diane. Motion made by Clerk Seeger, supported by Trustee Snyderman. The police department is requesting to purchase the Apex Officer Training Simulator from GovRed Technology Incorporated, the sole source vendor of this product. GovRed Technology Incorporated has provided a 50% discounted quote for the training simulator, which includes all hardware and software for two trainees and the trainer in the amount of $62,500. The department is also requesting a 2021 police budget amendment to accommodate this purchase as the discount offer expires on December 31st, 2021. Chief Bow, do you have anything to add? Yeah, certainly, you'll see uh, in our board goals, it may seem like a stretch that it's associated with township goal number six, but some of the feedback I'm getting right now from the oversight committee is uh, more de-escalation training. And as we address reasonableness and de-escalation, this um, program is exceptional. We tried to go out for a grant for 150,000 to support this but we were denied by the COPS grant in Washington. So we're using a forfeiture budget and some unallocated funds from the other um, capital outlay there to uh, cover this and we request for approval. This is dynamic. We can go from something that happens in the United States and recreate that the next day with our uh, training officers. So we're excited about it. It's, um, I believe some of the board members have seen the prior system that we use, Milo, this is um, well above and advanced what you've seen before. Great, thank you. Any board discussion, questions, or comments? Great, thanks. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item G6. Where is that one? Here it is. Commit, consider amendment to operations policy seven, procedure for conduct of township board meetings. Supervisor, I move to approve the amendments to Operations Policy 7, Procedure for Conduct of Township Board Meetings. Motion made by Clerk Seeger, supported by Treasurer Slavens. Operations Policy 7 is a Township Board approved procedure for the conduct of board meetings and has outdated processes and language. The need to amend the policy was discussed and proposals were reviewed at the board meeting on October 26, 2021. Future board members shall be given a copy of the rules adopted pursuant to the provision of section 77.6 of Public Act 
359 of 1947, the Charter Township Act, MCL 42.7. Clerk Seegers, do you wanna explain this further or have any comments? Um, I took the feedback from the board. Uh, sorry, Stephen, you weren't at that meeting. That's okay. Um, but you were there in spirit. And if you look, the first attachment is the red line version showing the elimination of the requirement on the supervisor's office or on us on individual departments to have information due on Wednesday because we have another policy where it is due on a Tuesday. We also decided this was not the appropriate location for that language. This was reviewed by Corporation Council. Uh, they were okay with all of the modified changes. Um, other changes were the um, public comment forums in the, fr in the beginning and at the end, adding board comments to the order of business, eliminating the 30 minute limitation on the uh, public comment forum um, and the individual item conference. Additionally, removing the need for a second on consent calendar questions or concerns to comply with Robert's rules of order. So real exciting stuff there. And then um, for the uh, roll call voting when needed, um, I indicated that uh, the last change would be that in the case of roll call vote, the vote shall initially be taken alphabet in alphabetical order and then rotate which is uh, something that we have been doing in practice, but that was not consistent with our policy. Thank you, any board discussion or comments? No, Kate? I just wanna um, thank Michael for bringing this forward. I think um, it was good to clean it up. Your kind words. Any others? Yes, thank you. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion passes. Okay, the next item on the agenda is uh, additional public comment. Again, remember this is not a question and answer, but you can make your comments and then there's, there'll be a staff and board comment time after that. So do we have anyone in the audience for public comment? Okay, sorry. You wanna just please restate your name again? Hi, my name is Ricky Theakston. I live at 4229 Merriweather Circle, Canton, in uh, Crystal Village Development. I'm the VP of the HOA Board, and I want to thank you for listening to us today. Um, we are deeply concerned, as I said, because we are a senior community, and as such, the resources uh, aren't always available to our residents the way they would be if they were working. Um, we do have concerns about the drainage, and as uh, Brad and uh, uh, Michelle said, we also have concerns about the trees, and we do understand your, your hands are somewhat tied on it, but our biggest concern, and my question is, when will this come before the board for final approval of the planning site? And any idea um, how closely the building department is gonna watch a development of this community. We've had some issues with the community that's supposedly going in south of us. They clear cut all the trees over last Christmas. I believe it's called Woodbridge Commons on the planning site, but there's no development, no streets in, nothing. I know you guys were in litigation with them. I'm not sure where that's going, but we don't want the same kind of situation with an Ann Village north of us. You know, that's been empty for over a year. There were trees down everywhere. They're finally cleaning it up. We don't need that happening again to the north of us. So we are concerned and would appreciate any additional time that the, the building department and engineering department could devote to this community to make sure we're not sitting there three years from now with the scalped landscape and all the uh, trees gone. The other thing is, um, we are looking at hiring a surveyor to come in and delineate our property lines because we think some of those tall trees are on our property lines. We've been to the planning committee offices. We've looked at the site plans, um, but it's different when you're out on the property and you're looking for stakes and markers. So we're in the process of hiring a surveying company to do that for us and just wanna know what its final approval of this site 
going to be so that we can get this done ahead of time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, go ahead. Once again, my name is Brad Holth. That's H-O-T-H, if you're writing it down. Uh, I listened to your comments in reaction to mine and my wife's comments, and I do appreciate that your hands are tied by state regulations. We did talk to our state senator, and we did talk to our state representative about this issue already. So we're trying to fight your fight as well. I would not expect anyone to break the law. Uh, I have just been asked to mention something else. I'll do that at the end. My concern was that what we're talking about is not the entire property. Most of the property is covered with scrub. They are non-registered trees. They can be cut down. I don't mind. <laughs> what we're talking about is a line of hickory trees and two massive elm trees, which are rare. They fall within five feet of what we think is the property line if they're not actually on our property. This property has a 35-foot rear setback. I can't negotiate with a non-development. You can, and I'm asking you to do that for us. This is not a big ask. They have 35 feet to play with. All of these trees are within five feet of the line. They still got 30 feet to do the work they need to do. Now, I was asked once again to mention that the current plan has a gap in the replanting foliage plan. There was an emergency gate that was removed at our request that has not been filled in with plantings in any of the plans to date. So as this comes to you in the preliminary form, before it is finalized, we want to make sure that that gate is removed and that there are plantings across that gap. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Public comment? Go ahead, sir. George Miller, many times through the years, some of the trustees that are here now tonight, I've asked for the ditches to be cleaned on Palmer Road. I know it's county, but according to the county, as long as the water's flowing, they don't care. Good example here recently, and I've done it for years, Cherry Hill, and uh, Haggerty Road floods, and there's no debris there in the ditch. The people cut the grass, they just clog up the sewer there. Some of these people cutting grass and stuff, you see it over the manhole covers, it doesn't drain. As far as the green stuff, I'd like to know what we can do about getting some uh, trees planted on the dump or something. I'd like to see them grow, if that's possible. I'd like to know, since we're in the conversation here of, uh, you know, green space, maybe we could improve on that. See what, we appreciate whatever you can do. Thank you. Any other public comment? Can we see online now, Greg? We can see oh, online great. now. Any public comment online? Public comment, you can raise your hand. I don't think we have any, I don't see any phone calls for star six, seven. All uh, engineering employees uh, engineering. on. Oh, that's true. I can see that. Okay, any other public comment? Public comment? Public comment. Okay, thank you. Next item on the agenda, uh, do we have any uh, staff comments before we go to the board comment? Nope. Okay. Any online staff comments? All right, great. Um, now is the time for board comment. Um, want to start down. Kate, would you like to make any board comments? Um, I just wanted to thank the people who spoke to us tonight during public comment. Um, your feedback is really important to us, and also um, one of the ways that we find out about things that we don't necessarily know about, so thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, I'll just mention the salute to service at the, at the Village Theater on Veterans Day coming up on Thursday. Um, I don't know when this will air, but if it does before then, please come out 7 p.m. Uh, and honor our uh, veterans. Thank you, Diane. Yeah, I too want to thank the residents for coming out and 
I'm sorry. I wanted to thank the residents as well uh, for coming out and speaking. That's so important. Um, sometimes we get emails, but it's often uh, helpful when you come to the board meetings and talk to us. And two, um, Thursday's Veterans Day, so I want to thank all the veterans, and hopefully we'll see you out at the Village Theater on Thursday. Thank you, Michael. I will just say, since he isn't here for the first time in my, um, in my uh, career on the board, um, in John Anthony's honor, not only is it Veterans Day tomorrow, but it is the birthday of the Marine Corps and so that is something to be remembered tomorrow as well. Something he would always bring up at the dais every single um, November 10th. Um, and then on top of that, I think, um, you know, there'll be a lot of opportunities through planning for Patrick Sloan, you know, to follow up with Patrick Sloan about um, some of the particulars of what the, what the final site plan approval recommendation might want to look like and negotiating, your, most definitely. So. A lot of really good comments tonight. Um, I appreciate everything. I don't have anything uh, else other than obviously so last Tuesday I was attending virtually because I was assisting in Livonia for their election. My staff was in Oakland County working at the Absent Voter Counting Board there. Um, they have a centralized process and we were really looking for best practices to bring back to Canton Township because last November we um, we processed 42,000 absentee ballots, which was a 290% increase from the last presidential election, um, which was 14,000 ballots. So to go from 14,000 ballots to 42,000 ballots was a challenge. And we really were not looking for best practices on how to, how to streamline the efficiency of the process to try to um, get that done in a more reasonable time. And um, I think we learned a lot. So that was a really beneficial exercise and I'm glad that my staff did that. Great, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I just wanna do some um, quick announcements. So composting, um, we've had some residents call. So composting has moved to your regular trash pickup day. So it's no longer on just a Saturday. So put it out with your regular trash and recycling. Um, we've seen some, some People have um, called about rats regarding a story that was in the Observer. So we basically have um, our public safety director here, Chief Chad Bow. He's put out a letter telling people how to keep their yards clean. And if you have any issues or questions, you can give them a call. I don't know if you want to say anything about that, Chad, or I know you've been the face of this. <laughs> Just uh, for the residents to know if they, they don't have the means or they need assistance, we do have some uh, traps at the front desk. So feel comfortable to come to the front desk and. Uh, uh, we'll give you a trap. Thank you. On it's, ditch cleaning, I heard some comments there. Uh, we are we do meet with Wayne County regularly. We're asking them to take um, more adherence to the drains, and we're helping list the drains that need the most help. And like um, Clerk Segrist said, right now was a preliminary site review, so what's going to happen is the final, before it comes to us, it goes to the Planning Commission again. So Patrick is the one to work with, and he's really good and very thorough. And I'm sure he's heard your comments. And um, so work with him, and he'll be working with the developers, and it'll go to the Planning Commission. You'll have an opportunity to make comments there again. And the Planning Commission's really good at taking that in. And then it comes to us, so that's the process. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. And I hope to see everyone at the Veterans Day celebration. Uh, Trustee Snyderman will be hosting that day. I will be out of town. And any other questions or comments for the board? Just to clarify, the um, traps for the rats are available at the front desk of public safety, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. Motion made by Clerk Segrist, supported by Treasurer Slavens. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Everyone have a great night. <laughs>